Hallelujah. Glory to God. We all welcome you to the morning showers. This Saturday morning, glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah. The Lord reigns. He is God forevermore. Who is like our God? We give him praise this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to study and lay at your feet. I ask, O oh God, that the heavens above us be opened this morning. I ask that you speak your word to our hearts. We ask that, O oh God, will be transformed by your word to the image of your son, Jesus. Thank you, Abba, Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Once again, welcome to Money Showers on Zoom. Glory to God. This morning we're going to be looking at a story that the Lord Jesus gave in Luke chapter number 12. <clears throat> I will trust in God to learn one or two things from this scripture. Luke chapter 12. We're looking at the story of the rich fool. <clears throat> and the Bible says that um, from verse 15, Luke chapter 12, let me actually read from verse 16 to 21. <clears throat> Luke chapter 12, from verse 16 to 21. The Bible says, Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a, re a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought with him himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will put down my bands and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? Verse 21, Jesus said, So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible tells us about this certain rich man. Jesus called him a certain rich man who had had a good harvest this year. And when he saw his plentiful harvest, he said to himself, what shall I do? I don't have enough room to store this wonderful harvest. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to destroy the ones I have. And I'm going to build a, build a bigger one. And I will store my goods. Then I will say to my soul, relax, eat, drink, and marry. Because you have store for, a year, for years to come. Now the Bible tells us here that God said to him, you are a fool. You are a fool. And that's why we got the concept of the rich fool. What we need to learn this morning, why did God call him a fool? Why was he a fool? Why do we refer to this man as a rich fool? And those are the things we are going to look at this morning. Hallelujah. Now, let's establish this. God is not against our prosperity. God is not against our having plenty to eat and to drink. God is not against our hard labor. The Bible says to every labor there is a profit. The Bible tells us that God has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. God is not against us having good harvest. In the first place, he promised that he will bless our food. He will bless our water. He will bless the works of our hands. So God is not against you getting rich. God is not against you being prosperous. In actual sense, God is the author of every good prosperity. The Bible says, realize that an eyes is sold in that land, 
and he yielded a hundredfold. He became prosperous because God blessed him. So God is not against us getting prosperous or having gold sources. No. But there are certain things we can learn from this rich man that made him a fool. Hallelujah. Number one thing we're going to look at is from verse 15 of that same scripture. Verse 15 of Luke chapter 12. The Bible says, And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. And that translation says, Beware of greed. For a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things that he possesses. So the first thing that made this man foolish, the first thing that earned his name rich fool, was because he was conventious. He was greedy. When a man becomes greedy, he's preoccupied and obsessed with putting and accumulating goods, earthly material things. And this is what this guy did here. He was a fool because he was greedy. God blessed him, but he became conversious, inordinate accumulation, inordinate desire to accumulate wealth was one of the major reasons why this man qualified to be a fool. He said, your land has needed so much. Break what you have. Build a new store and accumulate well, accumulate goods. This is the first thing that singled this man out as being a fool. He was conversious. He was greedy. He wanted to pile up things for himself. And this is wrong in the sight of God. Hallelujah. Let's put it this way. You have 20 sets of shoes in your closet. And each month, you're always accumulating new shoes that you will not wear for a whole year. That is greed. That is materialism. And this is what God was saying here. That no, a man's life does not revolve. A man's life does not consist in the things that he has accumulated. And we need to be careful. The Bible talks about conversiousness as being equal to idolatry. In Ephesians chapter number 5, let's look at this scripture. Conversiousness or greediness, the Bible says, is liking, is akin to idolatry. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 5. Paul says, for this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, or conversious man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Conversiousness is equal to idolatry. When you are obsessed with accumulation of material things, it becomes an idol to you. And this is what the Lord is against. Greed and conversiousness will want you to bring material things at the same level with God. So that's the first thing. And we need to be careful of conversiousness. Bible says in Exodus chapter 20, do not convert your neighbor's goods. Do not convert this. So the scripture is clear. Hallelujah. There's a difference between desire and being conversions. But I must realize here yeah, that conversiousness is like the sin of idolatry. Let's look at the second reason why I believe the Lord called this man a fool was that this man was rich in earthly things, but not rich towards God. Look at verse 21. Bible says, so is he who lays up treasure for himself. And, not, and is not rich towards God. Two things here. Number one is that he was rich in material things, but he was not rich towards God. He had times for worldly things. He does not have time for the things of the world. How do you know a man who is rich towards earthly things and not rich towards God? 
He will always make excuse for his business. He will always make excuse for his job. He's always making excuse. He does not care about the things of God. He's poor. The things of God does not excite him. The time for God, he gives it to business. The time to prayer, he gives it to business. He does not have any communion, any fellowship with God. He does not prioritize his time with God. He will readily shift and change times for God with anything because he wants to accumulate wealth. He is rich in earthly things, but his poor towards God. And any man, no matter how wealthy you are, no matter how rich you are, no matter the goods that you have accumulated, when we begin to realize, when you begin to realize that you rather spend time out of tune with God just to satisfy some earthly obligations, you are becoming poor towards God. And listen to this. One of the ways to Decipher a man who is rich towards God is the fruit of the spirit that he produces. It doesn't matter how wealthy you are, but when you are lacking in the fruit of the spirit, you are a poor specimen. That's what the Bible says. So he was rich. People say he was a rich man in the things of the world, but he had nothing to show for it in the realm of the spirit. Spiritually, he is bankrupt. God forbid, there are many people in the church today that are spiritually bankrupt. There is nothing to show that they have never met God. So he is a fool who is rich towards the things of this world, but is not rich towards God. Hallelujah. Number three reasons why I believe that Jesus called this man rich fool, it was that he was busy laying treasures on earth. He was busy laying treasures on earth for himself. He was laying treasures on earth. If you look at the scripture in Matthew chapter 6, we look at Matthew, Bible book of Matthew chapter 6, there's an injunction that Jesus gave us here from verse 19, clear court injunction, admonition. Is that from verse 19 to 21? Jesus said, Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where tears break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys. And where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Another mistake that this man made that we need to be careful about is that we must learn not to just lay up treasures for ourselves here on earth. Because it's open, whatever it is that we lay up on earth is open to corruption, is open to degradation is open to be stolen, is open to be destroyed. And no matter how wealthy, as I said, there was, there was a video recently on social media where people had a stacked load of money that cockroaches and, and, and all sorts of elements of weather had destroyed. If you have $1 billion in your account or wherever it is, it is subject to be corrupted. And this is what Jesus is saying here. This man was a fool because all his attention, all his time, he laid up treasures here on earth. Can I ask you a question? What is your bank, heavenly bank account like? <laughs> How much have you saved in heaven? Hallelujah. How much have you laid up in heaven? And, you know, we need to be careful because even in ministry, a lot of people think that the amount of treasures we have on earth will determine how successful you are. No, that is not the teaching of the Bible. That is not what Jesus taught. This is not what the apostles, early disciples taught. Our home is in heaven. 
And the Bible teaches us to lay treasures with him. Because where your treasures are, there your heart will be also. Hallelujah. When your heart is not towards God, you cannot be rich towards him. That's number three reason why this man was considered a rich fool. He was rich, but he was a foolish man. The the fourth one we are looking at this morning. And the reason we are looking at them is so that we can pray and be wise. So that we don't become fools. Look at Colossians chapter 3, from verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Look at verse 2. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Scriptures. Set your mind on things above, lay treasures. In heaven, we must be conscious and be deliberate to lay up treasures in heaven. The fourth reason why I believe that the Lord called this man a fool can be seen in, let's go back to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. The Bible says that, he said, he taught with himself verse 17. Luke 12 verse 17. And he thought with himself, saying, What shall I do then? Since I have no room to store my crops. So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my bands and build the greater. And then I will store all my crops and my goods. Verse 19. And I will say to myself, So you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. One very important thing we need to learn from here is that this man, this rich man, though has been blessed by God, arrogated all the glory to himself. There is no mention of God. There is no mention of appreciation of thanks given to God. He arrogated all the glory, all the praise to himself. You have done well. You have worked well. You have done this. You have labored. Where is God in your success story? Where is God? The Bible says it is him who gives us power to make words, to create words. It is God. Hallelujah. Paul says, I am who I am by the grace of God. Child of God, no matter what you achieve, no matter what you become in life, we must always know that all the glory must be to God. In Isaiah chapter 42, verse 8, look at what the Bible says. When man begins to arrogate glory all to himself, he elicits the wrath of God. Look at what verse, verse 8 of Isaiah 42 says. He said, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory. I will not give to another, nor my praise to cut images. Hallelujah. We need to be careful whether you are a student, whether you are a pastor. I ask a lot of pastors, you know, sometimes we make such mistakes. You are preaching and the people are responding. The power of God is going on. And instead of us giving praise to God, we say to ourselves, hey, I'm preaching good today. It is not your preaching good. It is the power of God. For the Bible says the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. God can use a stammerer to move his people. We have seen dumb people giving praise to God and the power of God moving. It's not your eloquence. It's not your, your putting scriptures together, a little here, a little there. It is by the power and the grace of God. This man arrogated everything to himself. My hands have done this. I will therefore do this. Then I will take my rest. Then I will eat, drink, and marry. Where is the place of God in your success story? I remember, you know, when I graduated from medical school some years ago, you know, when I, when I saw my, my math number on the wall, you know, the following candidates whose matric number appear below have satisfied the examiner. 
in the final MBBS exam, I, I, I was moved. I knew that it can only be God. And I wrote across my name, courtesy of the grace of God. May the Lord help us to always know what you are, what you have, what you will be is by the grace of God. And we must learn to give all the glory to him. No man on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be to the Lord. Like we said, there is nothing wrong in this man being successful. There is nothing wrong in this man being prosperous. There is nothing wrong in this man having so much laid up. The difference would have been, Lord, I thank you for your blessing. Lord, I thank you for the crops this year. Lord, I thank you for the harvest this year. Lord, I have more than I need. I give you glory. That would have changed the whole equation. If he had just turned the glory to God. Lord, I thank you for blessing my crops. Lord, I thank you for blessing my land. We need to be habitual in giving thanks to God in the things that we have. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the last one we're going to look at today. You know, let, let me even read this scripture just to let you know how God hates when we arrogate glory to ourselves. When we're feeling too important, I am here. Don't you know who I am? God will show you who he is. <laughs> I like that. When you want to show who you are, God will show you who he is. In Acts chapter 12, verse 23. I like this scripture. I can't forget that. The Bible says, so verse 21, Acts chapter 12, or verse 21. So on the third day, Herod, I read in royal apparel, sat on his throne and gave an oration to them. And the people kept shouting, the voice of the God and not of the man. Then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God. Did you see that? And he was eaten by worms and died. Herod was a king. I read in Royal Apple, sat on his throne and gave a big oration to the people. His voice was so beautiful, his speech was so wonderful that people said, No, no, this cannot. This is more than the voice of a man. This is a God speaking. And the Bible says immediately, God couldn't tolerate it. God couldn't tolerate it. And he hasn't changed out of God. He couldn't tolerate it. And the Bible said, then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him. Why? Because he did not give glory to God. And he was eaten by worms and died. This is exactly what happened to this rich fool. The Bible says, God came to him and said, you fool, this night you will die. This night I will show you that I am the boss. Hallelujah. Stop arrogating Glory and praise to yourself for the sources that God has enabled you to acquire. Let me say it again. Stop arrogating. We need to be deliberate. Stop arrogating. A lot of times people push you. You are the best. Greatest of all time. The greatest preacher on earth. The best doctor on earth. We need to be careful. Because, yeah, the people pushed Herod. <laughs> You know, Herod wasn't the one that said, I'm, I'm not a man. I'm, it's the people that said, no, this is the voice of God and not man. And he said, oh, they can correct them. Sometimes when people are plotting, you know when to say, please stop. Let's give the glory to God. Or else you may be struck by the anger and the wrath of God. The last point we're going to share about is that this guy was all about himself. It was selfish. He, there, there's nothing wrong in being blessed. One of the greatest prayers to pray, Lord, bless me that I may be a blessing. And when God increases your resources, when God blesses you, do not just sit down to consume it upon your loss. 
James said, you ask and you receive none because you ask to consume it upon your loss. When all you think about is I, me, and mine, you have mistaken. That is not, that is not Christianity. When God blesses you, look for avenue, any avenue to bless others. Apostle Gora, Father, the Lord said something I can't forget a long time ago or some time ago. He said, until your riches reach others, you are not rich. Let me say it again. Until your riches reach others, you are not rich. If your riches and your wealth is just you by yourself, you by yourself, even maybe by your family and your generation, it's all about you, 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 you are a poor man. Until your rich is rich others, you are not rich. May the Lord help us this morning. That as he blesses us, as we move on in life, may we realize that only him deserves all the glory. May we give him praise. May we use his blessing to bless others. May we not be like the rich fool whom God has blessed, yet arrogated the glory to himself who laid up only treasure, who laid up treasures only on earth, rich on earth, but poor towards God. May the Lord help us this morning and all the days of our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God forevermore.